Hello friends, uh, this is the second uh, lecture on uh, introduction to reinforcement learning. So in the last lecture we see, we saw how uh, agent and environment interact with each other where agent performs some action and environments emit some observation and rewards in, uh, in response to the action that the agent performed. So we will continue our discussion from there. So the main theme of uh, this lecture would be to uh, describe history and state. So what is history and what is state? So first of all let's understand what is a history. So uh, as I said in the last video we have an agent and anything which is not part of the agent is an environment. So this agent is nothing but the algorithm that we are trying to develop. Like uh, we are creating an algorithm which will learn to play a game of chess. Then this agent will be that algorithm uh, which we will be improving by understanding the state of the environment. So agent performs some action and in turn uh, it receives some reward from the environment and some observations. So this was explained in the last video. So history is nothing but a sequence of those like agent performs some action A1 then it received corresponding observation and rewards A2 and corresponding observation and reward and so on till time t. So history till time t will be the sequence of all those actions, observations and rewards. That is whatever observable variables are up to time t from the agent's point of view like whatever agent has observed till now and whatever actions it has performed. So whatever happens next depends on the history. So this history is very important because it will be used to determine what will happen next. So the agent or our algorithm it will select its action based on the history by looking at the history like what action it performed in the past and what reward it got and what observation it received. So it will the algorithm will keep on evolving and uh, its uh, next action will depend on the history. An environment also selects its observations or rewards depending on the history. So now we know what is history we can try to understand what is a state. So history we see that it will grow over time and uh, it will be lots and lots of information. It will be a long stream of information and uh, it will be very tough to uh, look back at the history. All those data whenever performing a new action or uh, for uh, from environment friends of point of view giving any new reward. So we pour out uh, useful information from the history and so the state is the information used to determine what happens next. Instead of history we will use just the state which will be information which has been extracted from history. So it can be uh, any function of history. So one example could be that uh, we pick just the previous three observations. Uh, it's not very important what happened in the long past. We are more concerned about what happened in the recent past. Like in stock trading also uh, there are different types of trader, different types of algorithms. Like some algorithms are just for short term trading, some are for mid to long, long term trading. So we have some moving average graphs like we will this moving average will be like 20 day moving average, 5 day moving average. So it will take into consideration the closing prices of the stock in the past 20 days. Similarly 5 day moving average will consider the prices of a stock in the previous 5 days and ignore any old data. So these are very practical examples uh, used uh, today. So, it, so one uh, feasible definition of a state was to uh, keep just last three observations or four observations and discard uh, the older history. So, so state is a more useful form 
and more useful information used to determine what will happen next. Now there is a concept of environment state or world state. So environment has some information and uh, it may not be totally visible to the agent. For example, a robot is uh, trying to uh, perform certain operations. It's trying to learn how to perform certain operations. So it's moving and uh, based on uh, some obstacle in its way, it will change its action based on the state of the environment. But uh, it sees a very limited view of the environment. It does not fully uh, observe what information the environment has. So there is a complex path and uh, this is suppose uh, it extends further and this is the environment and the robot is somewhere here and it's walking in this direction. So it observes very limited information from the environment. It does not have information about other parts of the environment. So this state that is maintained by the environment which uh, it, it uses to uh, generate next observation of or rewards is not fully accessible to the environment. Even if it's visible, it may not be very useful for agent for determining its net next set of actions. So we have the notion of agent state also. So this state will directly impact our algorithm, algorithm that is used by our agent. So it, it will contain the internal info representation of the agent or our algorithm. So this is the information used by uh, agent to pick its next action and uh, it can be any function of history. So we generally denote agent state like this and environment state by So in all those concepts uh, we use Markov assumption concept a lot. So this simplifies our task very, very much. So uh, any uh, state used by agent it's a sufficient statistic of the history. So in order to predict the future, you only need the current state of the environment. So state S is Markov. If and only if this condition is satisfied, that is here. The next state, given the current state, so we are in state ST at the moment. So in the given state, if we perform certain action, then what state we will end into. So, so this is a state st and this is just t plus 1 next state and we move to this state by performing some action. So given this we had earlier states like S1, S2 and so on. So we will say that these relationships don't exist. That is the current state and the current action is sufficient to determine the next step. So these uh, old states don't contribute anything in determining the current state. Only this current state. So uh, the next state given the current state and action is same as the next state given the entire history and the action. So we can say that future is independent of past so these states were the past. So this future is independent of these given the present. This is the present state. So example, uh, 
there may be some trading algorithms which are used by high frequency traders so these high frequency traders trade at a very uh, high frequency that's why the name is H HFT so like of the order of milliseconds it can execute multiple orders within milliseconds and it uses the very near or immediate price fluctuations of the stock market like this algorithm may be looking at uh, this is the price of the stock and there are some technical indicators on top of this like moving averages I, I explained earlier and here is one trigger point so this these all technical indicators will be using a very uh, small horizon uh, it will not look at the entire price of the stock since uh, past 20 years or 30 years so for example it looks at just past 20 days prices so in this case one state will represent a price band of 20 days so we will set this as representing one state so uh, st minus 1 would be the price 40 days back price between 40 days back and 20 days back and st will be price in the previous 20 days so this indicator will depend on just the price in the previous 20 days so this would be uh, this we modeled as a Markov uh, based on Markov assumption so here the definition of state will be the price in the previous 20 days so uh, with this I will end uh, today's video uh, and I will continue uh, the introduction of reinforcement learning in next a couple of videos so stay tuned for that and uh, feel free to give any valuable feedback on how I can improve uh, these videos and don't forget to subscribe my channel if you like my content thank you